You know, we were talking about a recent podcast about uh, the selection process for the Brunswick uh, Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, it needs some fine tinkering, but this is not what this podcast is all about. It's going to celebrate where uh, Hall of Fame got it right. Now, in the Manitoba Sports Hall of Fame, one of the most distinguished uh, sports guilds or sports sports alumni groups in all of Canadian history put this guy in its Hall of Fame uh, a few years back and let me tell you this guy is so deserving of recognition not only because he went what he meant to Manitoba hockey but he what he meant to his many fans in the AHL the CHL the a, uh, NHL uh, a prototypical goalie of the of the 1970s and early 80s you know six feet 180 great Great helmet, great, uh, uh, great skill around the net would protect his cage, swing his stick like Billy Smith, and uh, you know appeal to hockey fans two to 102 because he was a nice guy, a good teammate, good skill guy. And when you talk about Kurt Ridley, some people remember him uh, coming up to Rangers. Some people uh, remember him as the Russian killer. He was the first goalie to get a shutout against a Russian touring team back in the day. Some people remember him for his time at Providence, uh, various, various CHL stops. But when it comes down to it, a good quality goalie maybe should have more success in the NHL, but you can't deny the fact that he made a show and made an impact. Now, he played uh, 78 games. Uh, in two years when he first came to Major Providence with the Portage Terriers of the Manitoba Junior Hockey League putting up five shutouts in that time frame and at 3.59 goals against average. Now he's eventually called up to the Brandon Wheat Kings uh, for five games during the 71 season and he's a performance caught the eye of the Boston Bruins who selected Ridley in the second round of the 1971 NHL Amateur Draft. Now Ridley became the first player to ever be drafted directly from Tier to Junior A. Now, after three seasons in the Bruins system, the New York Rangers claimed Ridley in a reverse draft, and he got, got his first taste of NHL action. Now, he was eventually traded to Atlanta Flames, and he was assigned to the Tulsa Oilers, where he picked up the CHL's Terry Sawcheck Award for fewest goals against. Now, in January 76, he hit the biggest level of his career when the uh, Vancouver uh, Canucks traded their first round draft pick to obtain his services. Now, with the Canucks, he would see regular NHL duty for about the next three seasons, but he was eventually sent down to the Dallas Blackhawks of the Central uh, League for the 79 season and would help the Hawks win the Adams Cup title and take home the Max McNabb Trophy for a playoff MVP. In 1980, uh, the Maple Leafs purchased uh, Ridley when he, uh, where he could, would remain until finishing his career with the Cincinnati Tigers of the CHL. A grand total of 104 games in, in the show, again with the Rangers, Toronto, and Vancouver. And thank you to uh, uh, our friends in the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame to allow me to present uh, this information. Now, uh, Ridley, uh, to say he was uh, what you call uh, uh, fat as a goalie, wasn't. Although he had some weight issues in his career. His best, uh, his best weight was around 181 to 185, and he used his size to his advantage. Now, again, he also played with the Portage uh, Terriers in the 69 uh, season as well. Now, with Oklahoma City in 72, where he had his first uh, pro action, 12, 18, and 4, played with the Dayton Gems of the IHL and the Boston Braves of the AHL in 73, then with Providence in 74, where he had a 19, 11, and 6 record. Two games with Rangers in 75, 1 and 1 record, Providence in 75 again, 32, 14, and 9. With Vancouver over three seasons, he had 602 record, 821 and 4, 1917 and 8, and a 26 and 2 record in 1980 before moving on to the Leafs. That year he had one loss in three, three games, and 81 he split time between uh, uh, Toronto and the New Brunswick Hawks. Uh, with a two and two record in total, and again with Cincinnati, ten six and one uh, in uh, nineteen eighty two. So uh, uh, twenty seven, forty seven, and sixteen in his NHL uh, career. Now, 
A little bit more background about uh, uh, when he time with the Terriers. He was MJHL first team, and that year with five shutouts and a 3.31 average. He had the IHL goals against average title for 73 in Dayton with 2.7. He was also on the 74-75 Providence team that won the AHL regular season crown. Now that season, he led the, uh, the AHL in games played by goalie, 57, wins, 32, and minutes, 33-11. He also played on the 76 Tulsa team that won the CHL regular season and playoff crowns, but was traded away midway through the season and was not with the team during the playoffs. Now he led the CHL with a 2.66 goals against average in 30 games for Tulsa, but did not play enough games to officially, officially qualify for the league leader in 76. And again, that lone uh, shutout in the NHL came in the uh, April 2nd 76 win versus Carolina, 5 0. 6 0 2 in the in nine games with Vancouver in 76. And again, the shout out to Russians, Moscow Spartak, 2 0 in an exhibition game on December 28, 77, becoming the first NHL goalie to shut out a Russian team. Now, he was also a runner up to the great Cesar Maniego in Vancouver, 78 Bolson Cup standings for most uh, three star selections at home. Again, won the CHL Abs Cup of Dallas in 79, and he led the CHL playoffs uh, that year in games played with 9, wins with 8, minutes 520, goals against average with 3, and again, the MVP of the playoffs. He also stopped 30 shots for Vancouver in a 6-2 victory over visiting Moscow on December 26, 79. Again, the Russian killer yet again. Now, he was also selected by the New York Raiders in a 72 WHA draft, which was the first ever in February 2072. Again, a Billy Smith uh, type of player around the net, uh, wasn't scared to uh, use his stick when needed. And uh, he was sort of like an RCA, CF uh, orphan. He grew up in numerous uh, cities while his father was uh, serving in the Air Force. Now. Unfortunately, 76, that situation with Atlanta, he failed to make uh, their roster uh, in training camp after reporting uh, to the squad allegedly 30 pounds overweight from the offseason. Now, he never started as a goalie in his career. When he was a 12-year-old, he shifted from uh, the back end defense to goaltending. Now, uh, Known for his number 35 and, of course, his uh, typical Vancouver double stick helmet, which has become legend among uh, NHL hockey mask collectors. Everybody, everybody remembers Kurt's uh, mask, and rightfully so. He wore it well. Now, uh, he also made medicine hats. WCHL's roster for 1970-71, but left the team due to personal re reasons. Now, uh, talking about his transaction history, again, claimed by Providence, uh, the New York Rangers affiliate from Boston, in a reverse draft on June 13, 1973. He was traded to the Rangers September 1975 for the Atlanta prospect Jerry Byers. He was also traded by Atlanta Vancouver in exchange for a first-round pick in 76, which ended up being Dave Shand. And Toronto took over his rights February, February 10, 1980. Now, after retirement, he returned to Winnipeg and worked for MTS selling telephone systems for numerous years and later relocated to the Dallas region and became a local sales representative for Clingsmore Abrasives, which markets products for the auto body uh, industry. Now, uh, Another thing he was known for, unfortunately, this is the only ugly part of his career, he had severe injuries and all nice incidents over the uh, campaign. He missed part of the 73 season. Excuse me, get a drink here. He missed part of the 73 season. With strained ligaments, his right knee suffered during Boston's 1972 training camp. Now, he, uh, he did not make his 73 season debut until Dayton's October 21, 2172 IHL game versus Flint. Now, he missed part of the 76 season with a broken finger in his left hand, suffered while reaching the stop a shot by Tracy Pratt during Vancouver's February 16, 1976 practice. The injury took place just two days after he had won his first start with the Canucks. 
and he did not return until Vancouver's March 13, 76 game versus New York Rangers. Now, he almost died in the ice. He was hit in the throat by an Eric Vail shot during Vancouver's December 20th, 770 game versus Atlanta, and unfortunately swallowed his tongue, nearly choking to death. Now, this was a, a nationally... A uh, big national story in Canada, and uh, uh, kind of brought in the fact of the uh, net guards were a very uh, commonplace right after. Uh, if you saw before the incident or around the same time, people didn't wear that kind of net protector, but for that on, it was again very common. Now, he uh, missed the remainder of the 78th season with strained ligaments in his knee, suffered during Vancouver's March 29th, 70 78 game in St. Louis. Now, he also missed some. The part of the 79 season with spraying ligaments in both knees, suffered a goal bound pileup to Vancouver's September 28, 78 preseason game in LA. He was eventually assigned to Dallas in late November of that year and spent the rest of the season there. Now, he also missed part of the 1980 season with a broken bone in his left hand, suffered stopping a Bernie Johnson shot in Toronto's February 16, 1980 game versus Hartford and did not return until uh, late March 1980. Uh, versus Minnesota. So uh, overall, like I said, tremendous player, although some injuries really hurt him. But I think the key point was uh, the, the fact when the big assignments were there, you know, playing against the Russians, winning twice, you know, it's hard to beat the Russians. And you know, we had a kind of a European style to him. You would look at Druzella and some of the other uh, uh, Sirha, the top European goalies of the time, that he would mimic that play a little bit. And I'm kind of surprised he never played for Team Canada in 77 and 78 when we came back to the world stage. I think it would have been a good fit. As you know, it worked back, to, back then. If a team didn't make the playoffs, uh, they would uh, call uh, squ uh, players from these squads for Team Canada. We see a lot of, you know, Chicago Blackhawks, California Golden Seals, Colorado Rockies, Kansas City Scouts, players like that. But uh, I mean, for uh, for uh, for for Kurt, my God, what a pleasure watching him play! Again, every save, save he made, you know, there was a, a thinking thinking man's uh, athlete behind it, and uh, you know, good when he stuck. Even Billy. Smith. I mean, he should have, uh, you know, taught people how to do uh, sword play because he would. His cage was his life. Uh, you know, as as uh, Gary Smith played in Vancouver, and he did two of the biggest characters, and I say that in a respectful way. In NHL goalie history, were in Vancouver those years. And if anybody knows Gary Smith, Gary has that same dedication. So to many, Kurt Ridley was the poor man's Gary Smith, but in a complimentary uh, way. And uh, I still say he should have playing for Team Canada. That's my, my personal opinion. I would like to see him against the Russians because he drove them nuts, didn't he? In the Spartak game. Have a good day. Bye.